John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The reason why I'm sharing it so we can see how important it is to walk this road. In Matthew 7 and 13 to 14, Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in their art. Okay, bear that in mind. Narrow is the way, broad is the way. Verse 14, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few that will find it. Think about that. John 10 and 9 said, I am the door by me. If any man shall enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pastures. The gate, the way, the door. Give me the layout. In the tabernacle of Moses, yes. The reason why we're spending so much time here, because God himself, Jehovah God, the creator of mankind, had set the pattern. No one can change the pattern. One may argue, well, Pastor Knowles, Brother Knowles, that's the Old Testament. Of course it is. But it's the Old Testament, what the New Testament was hidden into. And because of the New Testament, the Old Testament was revealed. Are you with me? I am the way. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Now, okay, let's argue this. Give me the blank screen. Keep that in mind, but give me a blank screen. Let's move from the old to the new. Bang. Can I have some light on that if possible? No? Okay. God had already set the pattern, which is natural physical. God doesn't dwell in physical temple no longer. Remember? He used to go right into the Holy of Holies to tabernacle with his children. Watch this now. When Jesus came, I came to fulfill. So the physical was Gone. Now, that's why he said, enter ye in at the straight gate. 
Where is the gate? I cannot physically, nor a bishop or whoever, their name in the front and the back or the middle of the name can point you to the gate. He said, seek and ye shall find. Tell him, reduce his voice, please. So in this world, we are in the spirit realm. Watch this now. But where is the gate? Now, the Father, Jesus said, no man come to the Father unless he draw him. Now, watch this now. When the Father do that conviction, that's why it's good not to put off that conviction what is in your heart. Because it's drawing you to the gate. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? So now I am at the gate. What you going to do? You still have to come to Jesus. You still have to come through the blood. The brazen altar is where the blood was shed on Calvary's cross. Hello, somebody. Everybody have to come through the blood. No man come to the Father, which is in heaven now, except you come through. Watch this now. So we can no longer argue, well, that's Old Testament. This is the New Testament in full force. It's no more natural, no more goat, no more physical high priest, but now we have the spiritual high priest, the blood once and for all. That's why Jesus shed his blood on Calvary once and for all to fulfill that what the Lord had set down. Are you following me? Follow me close. So here it is now. We are saved. Jesus saved us from our sins. But we don't stop there. He said, I am the door. When we are saved by the blood, we move now to the lava, which is the word. You don't physically see the water. Hello, somebody. But the word is now alive. It's living. And the word, when we read it, we wash. Why we wash? When Jesus was speared in his side on the cross of Calvary, what came out? Blood and water and oh Lord in the lava and blood on the brace on the brace and altar. Blood and water. I said as before and I say it again. We continually preach about the blood, but we don't talk about the water. This is what wash our negative attitude away. Jesus washed our sins away. The blood washed the sins away. The priest now, the Levitical priest, had to wash before he goes behind the holy of holiest. Hello, somebody. Now you and I are safe. I'm clarifying, not no more Old Testament. We are in the new now. Are you hearing me? I'm safe. I'm being washed. So know where am I headed now? I'm headed to whom? The Father. That's why we call it a journey. Are you with me? Are you following me? And here it is now, when we enter that door, the holy place, the candlestick, which is the word, 
Here it is now. The seven lamps represent the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Watch this now. God give us the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus told the disciples, it is expedient or it's important that I go away because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit, watch this now, will bring knowledge, the seventh spirit of God. Watch this now. The Holy Spirit will bring wisdom. It will bring counsel. It will bring power. It will bring fear of the Lord. That's why we fear the Lord because of the Holy Spirit. And it will bring understanding. Watch this. Oh Lord. Are you still with me? Now, we ain't got no natural in front of us no more. Remember that now. Jesus came natural gone. Now we're in the spirit realm. That's why when we step in the holy place, I said the holy place is the place to be. Are you hearing me? And when you are in the holy place, remember now. Although the curtain is open, you and I cannot waltz. And I say this before and I say it again. We cannot waltz in God's presence, not Jehovah God. When we say we're in the presence of the God, that's the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hello, somebody. And because of the Holy Spirit was sent to us, he empowered us because Jesus died for us. We are in Christ. Now we can go to God, but we can only go to God in Christ. Because he said, I am the way. He said, nobody can come to my father except you come through me. So it doesn't matter how many roads man said. It doesn't matter how many laws man, man laid down. That's irrelevant. There is only one way. Hello, somebody. So the Levitical priest had to go in. And pour the blood on the mercy seat. Jesus, take the blood, watch this now, and pour it before God. Remember now, listen to it. When did he do that? Let's go back. I got to get, the, get to the message quick. You see the message? Just the introduction. Uh, because you may argue and I feel it. That's the Old Testament. He's teaching. That's that, that done away with. No, no, no. We're still there. We're there. Watch this. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead. And he began to talk. Mary said, well, they, they, someone stole my Lord away. And, and, and I don't know where they let him. And, and all this. And she began to complain. And Jesus was right there. She didn't recognize him. And when he said, Mary, fulfill the scripture. My sheep know. Ah, you got it. My sheep know my voice. When he said, Mary, whoa, he recognized his voice. What happened? His apparel has changed because he was now in a glorified body. Hello, somebody. So now what? Jesus told Mary, Mary, don't touch me, for I have not ascended to my father. But go tell my disciples, meet me over in Galilee. I wish I could read all this, but I could take a lot of time. Watch this. Meet me over in Galilee. So here it is, Mary, break off running. Tell, told the disciples. The disciples didn't believe. Go on to the tomb. See it was empty. What happened then? Jesus, in his glorified body, as God, one more t another time, went before the Father, and he had to make a representation of the blood. His own blood. The father was pleased. Jesus came back in a few moments, stepped through the door and said, She like she lalam when the disciples were there. When did you ever see Jesus walk through the door before he was resurrected? Nowhere. But after he was resurrected, he walked, he came right through the door. What happened? The blood now was represented. 
No longer now. Hello, somebody. You need a priest. No longer. You need to go to confess your sins. Believe me, I can't help you. I tell you the truth. If you come to me and start confessing, I say, let's pray. It's only Jesus. He is the only one. Great God from Zion. Can help you in this situation. Lord have mercy. Lord look where I am. I had to give you that because I felt like in my spirit someone may have been tangling, wrangling in their mind. No, that's the Old Testament man in Exodus 25 and 31 which we read last week. But God is good. Isn't God good? He laid the foundation, opened up the way, now for you and I to walk in. That's why I can't drag Brother Charlie and come back in here and say, come Brother Charlie, unless I see the fruit what Charlie is bearing. And neither can I be a judge because I am not, I don't have that ability to judge no man. Oh, you're hearing me. Now let's go to the message. Say amen. amen. Lord, uh, give me the tabernacle, please. Oh, last week we left off on the candlestick. Just give me the candlestick. Hold on, just, just before you move it, just before you move it. All what you see here, if you read Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, you will see all everything. God laid this out to Moses, not man. God, the eternal. Now, if one or someone, even on Zoom, you know how to get around God, please tell me. Because I like to hear it. He is the ultimate one. Here it is. You and I were in sin out there. But now we're in the gate. We're washed in the blood. Washed in the lava. With water in it. Now we're in the holy place. You call it the, this is the holy place. Now standing before God in the holy of holiest. Now I always say, this is the place where we have to live. Amen? Why? Because the Holy Spirit will always be with us. Bringing everything back to our remembrance. But watch this. This is interesting, hey. Although we are saved through or by the blood, and we are washed in the word. Give me the candlestick now. Notice the candlestick. Remember, we mentioned it's one piece of gold. Not different pieces. Watch this. When gold is taken out of the earth, it is fit for practically nothing. Ain't that something? When you find gold from the earth, when you take it out, it's probably good for nothing. In order to make it usable, it must pass through the purifying fire. Why did you start your nose? Because where I left off last week, it's because this, this process is typical that which God work, works in the church God, by his Holy Spirit, is purifying and sanctifying his church by the means of fiery trials, 
testing and suffering. Ike. Now, God, Jesus don't do all that suffering. Why should I go through that? Because there are some things in you and I. Though we are saved. Saved by the blood. Hello, somebody. And the Holy Spirit now begin to wake on us. Because you desire to get before the Lord. Remember? And that's why when we pray, be careful what you're saying. Lord, use me in a mighty way. God said, okay, I'm going to start hammering you. Bang. I'm going to start molding you. Bang. I'm going to start shaping you. Bang. By trials, fiery trials, testing and suffering, God shape us and mold us the way he want. And after we go through the molding, that's why I said, don't fight it. Don't kick it. We blame the devil for everything. And sometimes I believe the devil go to the Lord and say, they blaming me for everything and they me. <laughs> but the Lord would allow the devil to bombard you and I so that you and I can get in shape. Hello, somebody. Ain't that something? Remember now, God has the control over Satan. Remember now, God is the one who called that cherub into being. So he used him however he see fit. Before he destroy him. Watch this now. Watch this now. After the goal is brought to the point. It can be fashioned. After we give in. Then the Holy Spirit mold us. Woo. Shape us. Fashion us. The way we ought to be. The way God want us to be. Are oh, you hearing me? Now watch this. And after the work is done, it is a thing of rare beauty. Now it is, is prepared and ready to put in its place. Moses couldn't put that in the holy place unless it had been fashioned and completed. We want God to use us, but we don't want him to fashion us. So then, if we want God to use us, we don't want God to fashion us, then be careful. He will not use us. Hello? The pattern is there. Jesus had gone through the pattern. So you and I, watch this now. Though in all the church we come forth as pure gold and it will confirm to the, to the divine pattern that God has foredeemed. For Dean, for our lives. If you got your note, you can put down Job 23, 10, 1 Peter 1 and 7, 2 Peter 1 and 4, Isaiah 52 and 14. All these are words. Now watch this. Here comes Jesus. And John 5 and 15. John 15 and 5, sorry. Give me that one. I think you should have that one. John 15 and 5. He says, I am. Notice what he said. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that 
abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. I hope we get to that fruit today. For without me, Jesus said, you can not do nothing. Now he was speaking to his disciples, but then again, that comes to me and you. Now one may say, now he ain't talking to me. I can do what I feel like. Oh yeah. Boast yourself and say, tomorrow this time shall so be right here. Can anyone can challenge God? And say, tomorrow, this time so, I will be here. Channel sick. I am the vine. Give me the candle. Yes, walk with me. This is the vine right here. Can you see my pointer? You are the branches. Anyone in me bear no fruit will be cut off. Notice in, us, in order for us to bear fruit, you and I must have the Holy Spirit. Walk with me. What is the fruit? In Galatians 5.22, for the fruit, Galatians 5.22, walk with me. For the fruit of the Spirit, that's what he's talking about now, is love, count them. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. These are the fruit in which you and I or to bear. So when we hear about fruit, it's not like what we've been taught when someone gets saved on the ministry say that's my fruit. No, I ain't fruit. We're sharing about the fruit of the Spirit. 23. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. How much is that? Nine. Bear that in mind. That's going to come back to you. So when we reach that point, hopefully today, we've already gone through it. One piece of gold, the number one is significant of unity, Oneness, one accord, one church. The candlestick, candlestick, please walk with me, represents unity, oneness. There are no break in here. So where all this division come from? Child, I belong to the so-and-so church. You're in trouble. Well, why all these names? The name only identify your location. With a group of people. But there is no division in God. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit one. So the church have to be united. And the reason why, hello somebody, give me the tabernacle. The reason why many cannot hear from the Lord, many who are straying away, is because we refuse to come together on one. God will not work in a divided army. When he told them, go and tarry, tell you be in door with power, the power did not come, the Holy Spirit did not descend until they were on one When we become as one unit and praising God, let me tell you something. Anything is liable to happen. Word of knowledge could come forth. It came forth this morning. Word of wisdom. Oh Lord. Remember, unity, oneness, one accord, one church, one God, one baptism. Give me John 17, 20 to 23, real quick. Work with me. Look what Jesus said. In his prayer, this is final prayer with his disciple. May the prayer for I these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Disciples sharing, others believe. No sharing, some will believe. No sharing. Some won't believe. Hello, somebody. That they all may be what? As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou givest me, watch this now, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. Why does Jesus keep repeating that? Does Jesus pray to the Father that the church be one, that there is no other alternative but one? One where knows one in believing the word. One way to God. Someone said there are many ways. God go with you. But there's only one way, Jesus said. Verse 23. I in them and thou art in me. That they may be, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me you know something let's move on real quick lord have mercy give me the candlestick Three knobs. I want you to. Sh I want to show you right here. God is revealed. God is the foundation. Watch this now. 
The number three is significant to the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. These three knobs uphold all of the seven branches as the very foundation. Can you recognize them? These three knobs, for business, I should actually explain that here, the knobs. Well, these are the knobs. These are the flowers. These are the bowls. These three knobs are the foundation. This is the typical of the truth that the Godhead is the foundation and an uphold of the church. Now, let me help you. The three knobs they are talking about is here. Follow me. One, two, three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is involved with the church. Christ, the Holy Spirit, the church. And God, and that's why you can't get around, you can't get around the Father right there. Son. Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Oh Lord, let's go a little further. Seven lamps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lamps. The seven is significant in its fullness completeness and purification upon the seven branches were seven little lamps of fire these seven lamps are significant to the seven spirits upon the messiah remember we went through that the seven spirits of god boy i saw some some brought some 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 technology start googling seven spirits of god Hello, somebody. These are also to be represented in the church. His body. Watch this now. There are seven lamps, yet one light. Oh, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven lights on the back wall. I don't know how much I forgot them. I put them in and so forget. And say there, say there are nine over here. But then when they all shine, they give one light. Am I right? Can you divide that light from that light? So how's the division come in the church? When they're all seven lamps, seven spirit, but only one spirit. Is that possible? God, three and one. Man, three and one. No, it's I only flesh. Oh, yeah. Wait till the flesh eye close. You'll recognize that you're more than just flesh. You move now into the soul and the spirit realm. Are you with me here? Are you walking with me? Is this helping you? Say amen. amen. If not, I'm only preaching to myself and feeling good up here. Believe you me. Lord have mercy. Watch this now. Nine ornaments. Give me the, let's flip. I told you before that the knobs, the bulbs, and the flowers 
represents the entire Bible. Now look at this. Nine ornaments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there are nine ornaments on every branch. You cannot count Father, Son, Holy Spirit because they're holding up. They're the foundation. You see why I tell you I love the story? And I wish, I hope they all will have to keep this drawing man. This is the right one. According to scripture. Watch this now. Nine ornaments on every branch. Watch this now. The number nine is the number of the Holy Spirit in the church. If you study the Hebrew, the Hebrew have, is related to numbers. Remember some time ago we began to talk about numbers and you know, and what is, what is significant in it? Yes. And help us. Watch this now. I, 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 boy, I love this. Believe you me, I love this. Watch this now. There are nine fruit of the Spirit. Hello. Did we read it? And nine gifts of the Spirit. Let's take a break right here. Because we need, we, we, I want to share this gift real quick. Let, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Somebody do something at AC. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. Keep it on so we won't blame. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. Work with me. Okay, I'll read it. First Corinthians 12. And we're going to start from verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Watch this now. Count them as you go. And there are differences of administration but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Watch this now. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one, for to one, no one person have all nine. Take it out your mind. You think you're a superstar? No. <laughs> God say no superstar in my church. Great God from Zion, have mercy. <laughs> For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. Count. To another. Why Paul really, really, really uh, being pacific here? The word of knowledge. By the same spirit. To another, faith. Great God from Zion. By the same spirit. To another, the gift of healing. By the same spirit. To another, the waking of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse, diverse kinds of towns. To another, interpretation of towns. But all these wicked, that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man. Ain't that something? You may have a word of wisdom. You may have a word of knowledge. 
You may have the word, of, uh, you may have uh, working a miracle. You see now why we are lively stone building the church? You see now it's important that we be a part of the family of God? Hello, somebody. So if you have that word of knowledge or the word of wisdom and we begin to get prideful, then what God's going to do, God's going to raise somebody else up. Hello. To bring forth that word. Now, let's go back to the drawing, please. Nine. Nine ornaments. Watch this now. Let's go a little further. Twelve knots. In the main shaft of the candlestick, there were four groups of bowls, knobs, and flowers, making a total of 12. On the main shaft, watch this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. On the main shaft. The number of 12 speaks of the apostles. There are many other scriptures in relating to complete the number of 12. Some of them include the following. 12 loaves on the table of shoe bread. We're going to go there after we finish this one. Not today. The table of shoe bread. It is important. You know, the candlestick is one that have the most teaching of it. And I even haven't scratched the surface. I'm only picking, picking through. The lava is the one that seems to have the least. But you want to see something? Wait till we get before the altar of incense. Man, the Holy Ghost can bust us right up. And you and I are going to know if we given any false fire. He called it false fire. False fire means imitating. You ain't real. Catch yourself. And when you come before God with false fire, he can move you. Don't get scared. Stay in the Holy Spirit. Once you're in the Holy Spirit and you know you're doing false fire, just repent and say, Lord, I repent. When I read, I said, God, how many times I went to church and give false fire? Forgive me. Preaching can come in false fire. Tell I know more than him. Pushing off your chest. You know, one can speak like me. You know, one can riddle up the scripture like me. False fire. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Let me stick to the candlestick. Have mercy. You see why you need to study the tabernacle? Because once we got it down packed, my brother, we on our way. Hello, somebody. Oh, God, have mercy. I, I, let, me, let me rush along. Let me rush. Represent the 12 apostles. Represent the 12 stones in the breastplate of the high priest. Represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this now. That means something. Let's go now and see where this whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Did you see it? Let's look at it. I'm going to help you. Nine ornaments, right? Each one Nine ornaments. Are you with me? Nine trees. Talk. 27. 27 plus 12. It's 39. How many books in the Old Testament? 39. Wait, God is of me. But I said the New Testament. We ain't get there yet. Hold on. That's only half. Are you with me? Nine ornaments, nine ornaments, nine ornaments. Are you with me? Nine trees. How many books in the New Testament? 
27 plus 29 is how much? But God's mighty. He more than smart. And I thank God who give man the wisdom. Man, you have to be in the holy of holiest. To put this together. New Testament, 27 books. Well, how you know it's one side? Okay, if you got a problem with the Old Testament on this side, put it on this side then. It's still 27 and 39. I had to say that because somebody said, how you know? <laughs> Just helping you. In my conclusion, God did all this just to redeem the fall of man. Ain't that something? So that you and I can know the way to come back to him. One God, one mediator, One Holy Spirit, one High Priest. As we close, the church, as God divinely showed us from the candlestick. A 70 lit. Give me the tabernacle. The whole layout. On Mount Sinai, where Moses received the instructions. Was it in Exodus? I could find it short to you. The Holy Spirit, watch this now, Brother Pike. When Moses received the instruction from God from Mount Sinai, it appears to the children of Israel as a fire. Now watch this now. Moses said the same fire came from Sinai. Watch this now. Enter the holy of holiest. Watch this now. Divinely. Boom. Lit the fire on the bronze altar. Money and nothing to do with this. So that a sacrifice can be consumed. Watch this now. From the Holy of Holies to the bronze altar, then it came back to the holy place and lit every candle or lamp there was. By God. Give me the candlestick again. God lit the fire. Watch this now. And give the responsibility to man to put oil in the lamp to keep it burning. We ain't got the Holy Spirit. We can't burn. We got no light. And if the Holy Spirit gone, shoo, isn't God good? 
is that Holy Spirit keep us as one. I may get upset, but Brother Charlie, Charlie may get upset with me, but look here. When the Holy Spirit convict me, I have to go back to Brother Charlie and say, look here, go back to your brother. Go back, ask him for forgiveness. Then come back and offer the sacrifice. I pray today that where we will be, Tabernacle, walk with me. As we in this place, I haven't finished with the candlestick, but I'll go to the shoe bread so we can get here. And then you can judge for yourself if we really, really worship in God in spirit and in truth. Or I'm giving him false fire. So my question today, God came down in the garden and he asked a question to Adam, Adam, where art thou? I will say to the church and those on Zoom, where are you? Be truthful. Are you out here? Wandering in the wilderness? Or you're coming home? One may say, I'm coming home. Thank God. Because the father is looking every day. Like the prodigal son when he went out. And he's looking every day to see if his son will come back home. And when you come back home, man, there's going to be a party in heaven. Let me tell you something. A man comprehension will not be able to comprehend. And from here, it's a good place. It's the only place. It's the right place. When Jesus come, those who are in him, in Jesus, will go with him. If you're out, you're out. If you're in, you're going. And only you and God know where you at. But the sad part about it, if he should come this day and we have not yet asked him to forgive us so he can wash us of our sins through the blood. Then those who remain will feel the wrath of God which dictated in the book of Revelation. 21 wrath. And I pray God that none of us be here. When we can be. In his presence. Sinless. Forevermore. Joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. The choice, you give it up to me or you, what shall we do with it? Maybe bow our head for a moment and as we reflect back to see what all the Lord has done for us, give himself Give him, give his son, give us Holy Spirit, so that you and I will be able to go with him.
Yes, yes, yes. For God is our king over all the earth. He's saying, come now, let us reason together. Do your sins be a scarlet and make them white as wool. If there is one in the house or on the platform, the Lord said, if you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. I'm going to be silent for a moment. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. This is the time. If you want to give your heart to the Lord, those in the chapel, you could come. We'd be glad to pray with you and lead you into some scriptures. Don't be ashamed. Those on Zoom, if you've done that, just write us a note so we can rejoice with you. And give God thanks for what he has done. Lord, we are done. What you have required us to do. Though millions have come, there yet room for more. Father, the way of the cross leads home. Thank you for giving it to our brother Moses. Thank you for him being obedient to you. And Jesus Christ would come. Fulfill that Lord which you have laid down. Now Father, though we don't see the brazen altar, we don't physically see washing of the word in the lava. We don't physically see the candlestick. But Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, use us in a mighty way. Purify us, sanctify us. Lord, though it may cause grief and pain, but Lord, we know that when you're done with us, will come out like pure gold. Help us not to be ashamed of you. Help us, O oh Lord, that we'll stand up for righteousness. Because we know, Father, one day we will meet you, either at the river of death, or, Father, at the judgment seat of Christ. Help us, Lord. Help us not to lean to our own understanding. But in all our ways, help us to acknowledge you. And we know you will direct our path. Father, bless us. Bless your children who listen so attentively to your word. Thank you for giving me this opportunity again to share your word. Father, may I live. May I follow in your footsteps. Until my soul be resting in your presence, we all be satisfied. Lord, thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.